Alrighty, so I filmed some videos a while ago about how I relay their belts and uh, I covered the basics of it and I thought I'd do another one now. There's a lot of people asking me about them so I thought I'd do another one now covering um, different colors of straps. Um, most of the straps you're going to do are black. Now when I do a black strap, like most people, it's easy. You get some black dye. There's a bunch of different kinds available at Tandy. I just use Pro Dye and put it on with a dauber. It doesn't matter how thick you apply it because it's black. So eventually the whole thing's just going to be, well, I guess, whitewashed for lack of a better term. Um, eventually you're going to get the whole thing to be a stark black. However, if you're doing a strap that isn't black, now this one is a block logo uh, Big Eagle. Uh, this is from my own collection. And I've just finished the leather work. Everything's dry. Make sure it's dry. And I'm going to be using Royal Blue Pro Dye. Same thing as the black. The difference is you don't want to use one of these <clears throat> to apply it. And the reason is because if you use a dauber to apply it, it doesn't apply it evenly. <clears throat> you get streak marks. Now, with black, like I said, it doesn't matter. You just keep applying coats until the whole thing's jet black. With blue, if you keep applying coats until this is, this is, um, the whole belt is saturated, it'll be almost black. You won't get a true blue out of it with any color dye. And you will get streaking, even with a lighter, uh, lighter dye like a yellow or something. So um, you don't want to use one of these, okay? Now, um, <clears throat> what you want to use instead is an air sprayer. This is my air sprayer. I'm going to go over in a minute how to, how to use it. It's really simple. You put the dye in here, and then you spray it with an air compressor. I have an air compressor over in the corner of my messy as hell workshop. This is from Princess Auto. I think it was 30 bucks Canadian. So they're really easy to get. Uh, yeah, so that's how I apply it. You put this in the, in the tube and then you add some, you can add some of the dye reducer if it's a really dark color. I'm going to try without it. <clears throat> and if I need to lighten it up, you can use dye reducer. Okay. Now that is for a strap where you're applying a color of dye. I've done red ones before. It's the same thing. Okay. If you spray it on, you will get a nice even coat. Okay. You'll also notice that on the strap here, there's very few lines, some down the middle, okay, and some around the plates. Now, the ones around the plates you won't see, obviously, because once you dye it, 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 it covered, the plates will cover it up, okay? But you want to keep the lines to a minimum on, on one of these because there's no guarantee. Now, I know for a fact that the pen that I used is covered by this, this royal blue dye because I've done it before, but there's no guarantee. So you may be using a different kind of pen with a different kind of ink, and it could show through, so you want to keep your lines to a minimum. Now, that's with a dyed strap. If you're painting your strap, it's the same basic idea, okay? Oh, sorry, with the dye, when you are done dyeing and it's dried, you apply the usual top coat that you would. I use a water-based product called Super Sheen. It's super bright. It's super shiny. And uh, you can apply it. Now, this is uh, not a water-based dye. I don't know if it's um, oil or alcohol-based dye, but either way, uh, you can apply this over top once it's dried. This is how I do most, 90% of my belts. For a painted strap, things are a little different. Okay, so... You want to use, though, well, first of all, for a painted strap, no lines at all. Okay, I don't care if you're using blue paint and you think a blue pen will work fine, you will see it through, it'll look horrible. Okay, no lines drawn on in pen at all. <coughs> makes things a lot harder. So, because these lines that line up the snaps make things much easier. Lines for the tooling make none. They, any, any little dot, any little speck will show through on a painted strap. Okay, uh, so you got to do it all without actually drawing any lines on the leather. I use a little spoon tool to, to draw everything in and just make sure that I'm right. Uh, acrylic paint. Water-based paint is what I use to spray down a strap, to, uh, to paint a strap. This is stuff I got at my local Michaels. It's acrylic paint. I've used it on a number of different belts. It works just fine. Problem is, if I just squirt that into here and try and spray it, <laughs> well, it's not going to work. Usually what I do is I'll do one part paint, two parts water. Shake it up really, really good. And you got to mix with that. It doesn't always work. And then you apply it in coats. Okay? Really thin. Especially with the paint, really thin. And once you start to apply the paint, it's good. the first coat, like any paint or dye, is going to look like shit. Okay? It's the way it goes. It won't look great. Okay? You, with paint and with dye, this is why when I do a re-leather for somebody, they want a different color strap, it costs more because there's like a million coats and a million steps and you got to use the air compressor and all that fun stuff. Okay? So usually it's four, five, six coats to get it a nice, even color. Now, some of these recessed areas, if I were painting it, which I'm not, but if I were, I would use a sponge with some of the paint on it. 
not diluted, just some of the actual raw paint on it. And you dab some of these recessed areas because the spray coat won't get that. I use a little white like makeup sponge and you dab it in some of the recessed areas like where my logo is and here, that kind of thing. You do that first, wipe away the excess, then spray it down. Okay, otherwise if you just spray it, it won't actually get into all the crevices and it won't look right. Okay, um, so once the paint has dried, if you're doing a painted strap, you cannot use this. This relies on a porous surface. So when you dye leather, the surface remains porous. Okay, so this will work just fine. When you paint it, the paint sits on top. It never actually soaks into the leather. So if you apply this, and believe me, I tried, you get little pools and streaks and droplets and it looks awful and you will have ruined your belt. Okay, what you have to use if you're painting is a different product called saddle lacquer. This stuff is expensive and it smells horrible. Like, don't use it inside your house. I use it in my garage and my wife gives me shit for it. Okay, um, this is, it's a... Um, you can put this on top of paint. It dries re really, really. It smells like um, it smells like uh, na nail nail polish on steroids. Okay, and you apply this over the paint after a couple of days. Once the paint is dried, when you put the paint on, you'll find it dries really flat. Don't worry about it. This stuff is awesome. It's expensive. I think this was like thirty bucks for this container. I'm almost out actually, but. It can be put over top of paint and it dries ultra super duper glossy, like as glossy as, as, as imaginable, and it will adhere to the paint. Now, if you're painting your strap, I tell all my customers this, anybody who wants a painted strap, if you're going to take your belt home, put it under the display stand, it'll look nice for a long, long time. But if you're going to pick up that belt and carry it around the house and move around with it, all these little areas where there's, there are creases between your plates, eventually the paint will crack. There's nothing anyone can do about that. Eventually, the paint will crack if you're using it a lot. If you zoom in on the HD ones they use on TV back when they had a white IC, it's the same thing. There's cracks and creases and crevices all in the paint. Happens in no time on TV because obviously they're, they're not really careful with the belts. But because paint sits on top, okay, it'll never soak in like a dye will. So anyway, that's how I, and the products I use to actually um, – to uh, – to, do a color strap or to do a painted strap, which are kind of similar. So I'll put this on pause, and in a minute I'll show you how to use this thing to apply the dye. Uh, one more thing really quick before I get to spraying the stuff on. A few more things you're going to need if you're spraying, especially if you're spraying dye. Gloves. Okay, otherwise you will get it everywhere. I learned the hard way a few times. And especially if you're spraying dye, I know this sounds ridiculous. I am not Mr. Safety. Use the heavy dutiest mask you have in your house. Okay, because I was... I had purple coming out of my nose for two weeks when I did an oval IC once. Use the heavy dutiest mask you have in your house. Like I said, I'm not Mr. Safety, but uh, this is one that I, 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 I stand by. <laughs> and finally, when you're transferring the dye from this container, not open yet, to here, use a syringe, okay? If you pour it, you're gonna make a huge mess. You might even get it on here and you've screwed up your project. Uh, use this to syringe it into there. Get a separate one to do the dye reducer if that's what you're gonna do, uh, add it in there. Okay, uh, I use like a kid's, this is for my kid's Tylenol. <laughs> Got a lot of these around, yeah. Okay. Okay, so this thing's hooked up to my air compressor. Forgive my voice, I have my mask on. This uh, hooks into the, the dye in there, okay. And it's hooked up to the air compressor. So, you want to fiddle with the control on here, so you're not getting a whole lot of dye out of it. First I was getting a ton, and as you can see there's a little bit of splotching. I'm not sure how well that's coming up on the camera. You want just a little bit of dye coming out at a time, see? That way you can apply nice, even coats. With my advice, use a test piece, okay? So then you come over to your belt, and you spend the next, oh, I don't know, hour or so, uh, just doing that, right? And eventually, you'll have a blue belt, or green, or, you know, whatever color you want. Like I said, go thin, go light. And I am going to put this down before I die my fucking phone. Thanks. So remember how I said, make sure you don't spill anything on it? Like the dye? You'll have a blotch. Should have followed my own advice. No matter what you do, that'll always be a dark spot. And if you applied with the dauber, which I didn't, that's just some overspray on the dauber. If you applied with the dauber, you'd have a bunch of dark streaks like that. Now, it's still blotchy, as you can see. Part of the reason for that is because it's the first coat. And the other part of the reason is I didn't put as much on the behind the big plate because I used 
when you spray on, you use a lot more dye. So there's no need to dye behind, like to make the same shade of blue behind all the plates because you can't see them. But the other areas, that's important. Anyway, 